Now, Dragon is also performing its final health checks to make sure all of the vehicle's primary systems are ready stage for its two, rendezvous with complete. the International Space Station. Dragon is and there's that call-out that stage two lock. Call out that stage two locks loading is complete. That wraps up propellant loading for both stages of the Falcon 9. And as I mentioned earlier, you may have seen those white clouds around the vehicle. Ground gas those close up. Those clouds you see are the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard. And when that gas comes out in contact with the warm Florida air, the air condenses into clouds and water. Now Dragon is about to transition into internal power. Also Falcon 9 uh, computers will then enter startup mode, which is when the Falcon 9 flight computers take control of the countdown, guiding the rocket through the last seconds before liftoff. You should hear a call out about startup shortly. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. Both stages are now pressurizing for launch. At T minus 45 seconds, we'll hear the SpaceX launch director verify go for launch. We'll go for launch. There you go. And at launch, the International Space Station will be flying 260 miles over the North Atlantic, south of St. John's, Newfoundland. T minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, engine full power, and lift off of CRS twenty eight. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Lift off of about seven thousand pounds of science and cargo. Including a new pair of solar arrays to boost power on the space station. Seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from historic launch oh, complex 39A in Florida. And we're now coming up on max Q in about 20 seconds from now. And this is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will go through during its Falcon flight. And there's that call out that Falcon 9 is supersonic, traveling faster than the speed of sound. And there you heard the call out for Max Q. Coming up next are three events back to back, the first of which is Main Engine Cutoff, or MECO, and this is when all nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage shut down. After those nine engines shut down, the first and second stages will separate, and this is also called out over the nets as stage separation. From there, the second stage will ignite its Merlin vacuum engine to boost Dragon to low Earth orbit during SES, or second engine start one. And this whole sequence takes about 15 seconds. Should be expecting that call out for main engine cutoff in about 40 seconds from now. Some amazing views of our Falcon 9 vehicle as it takes our Dragon spacecraft to orbit. And in just about 10 seconds, we should see that main engine cut off. Nico? Stage separation. In back ignition. And there you heard those callouts and probably saw on your screen main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one. As I mentioned earlier, we're flying an MVAC nozzle, uh, a shortened MVAC nozzle on our second stage. 
If you're just tuning in, you're watching a live webcast for the 28th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. This is SpaceX's 38th mission for 2023 and the fourth Dragon flight to the International Space Station this year. We lifted off from Kennedy Space Center's historic Launch Complex 39A just about three and a half minutes ago. Now on your screen, on the left side, you can see our Falcon 9 first stage, which is going to uh, descend back towards Earth, and the second stage on the right side of your screen, which is carrying the Dragon spacecraft. Now, as a reminder, today's mission hey, marks the fifth flight Bermuda. for this Falcon 9 booster. Falcon 9 booster, which previously supported the Crew-5, GPS-3, Space Vehicle-6, Inmarsat-6 F-2, and one Starlink mission. In order to make its way back to our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, the Falcon 9 first stage has two more burns to execute. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. This helps slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The entry burn is followed by the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. Now, occasionally with the Falcon 9 first stage on the left side of your screen, you may see some oh, small white puffs, and those are nitrogen gas bursts that are used for attitude control. You can also see there on your screen a pair of the hypersonic grid fins. Falcon 9 is equipped with four of these grid fins, which are comprised of titanium, and they are positioned near the top of the first stage. Once in the atmosphere, stage one is only using the grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth and these grid fins orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the rocket during its descent. Now the Falcon 9 first stage has nine Merlin 1D engines and, and each engine generates about 192,000 pounds of thrust. On the second stage is the MVAC engine, which has a slightly wider nozzle and that, uh, and the vacuum engine generates about 203,000 pounds of thrust. Next major milestone is going to be the first stage entry burn, which will take place just over a minute from now. There you can see an amazing view of our stage two with its shortened MVAC nozzle. The Falcon 9 first stage, which is not currently on your screen, has reached apogee and is now beginning its descent back towards Earth. The second stage is continuing to take our Dragon spacecraft to orbit. we should see that first stage entry burn begin in about 15 seconds from now on the left side of your screen. Stage one, FTS has saved. The second startup. stage on the right side of your screen. And there's that call out for stage one entry burn startup on the left side of your screen. The second stage is continuing to take our Dragon spacecraft to orbit. Now again, the entry burn is the first of two burns that the Falcon 9 booster performs before landing on our drone ship. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there's that confirmation of stage one entry burn shutdown. As we get closer to first stage landing, it's good to note that the Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made of state-of-the-art carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. These landing legs are placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket and deployed just prior to landing. And if successful, this landing will mark the 198th time that we've recovered a first stage booster, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. We are about 25 seconds away from that landing burn beginning. 
stage one transonic. Now, as the rocket descends through the Earth's atmosphere, this really puts deceleration into perspective. In the span of less than a minute, we'll have reduced from twice the speed of a jet all the way down to zero as the rocket lands. And as Falcon lands, we may also hear a call out that the second engine will shut off around the same time. Stage one landing burn. Deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. <laughs> and, and there you have it. The Falcon 9 first stage that supported today's mission has landed for its fifth time, having previously supported Crew 5, GPS 3, Space Vehicle 6, Inmarsat 6F2, and a Starlink mission. Today's landing also marks the 198th successful landing for an orbital class rocket. 